Yes, I'm back in sunny Belfast, sunny North Belfast, and where am I today? I'm at the birthplace of Crusaders Football Club. You know what? Like, it's a real pity there's no markings or anything in that building behind me. The blue building, that's where Crusaders were formed. So, Crusaders were formed there, 182 North Queen Street, at the home of Thomas Palmer. Now, this is great because you see the wee place next door is a butcher's. And I was talking to the man in there and he goes, the Palmers, oh, I remember them. That was a wee sweet shop. Oh, they were open all hours. So I was like, that's class, says. You know, they remembered the Palmers, but he didn't have a clue that Crusaders were formed next door to his butchers. Anyway, they are formed there, the home of Thomas Palmer. And along with James Michael Downey, John Hume and Thomas Wade, that made up the club committee in there. And in there, they also discussed what would they call the club? So, they sat up there in that house behind me and they discussed the name. They needed a name for this new club from North Belfast and they were suggesting street names. It was Rowan Star, Coltra United. Coltra Street is literally the entrance to Tigers Bay there. It was Murview Wanderers, Moyola. So all street names around this area. There was other suggestions such as Queen's Rovers, Lilliputians, as well. But Palmer wanted a name that stood out. He wanted a name that was more international. And Crusaders were born. Crusaders named after the medieval Christian knights. Crusaders played at a couple of grounds before they found their home. I'm going to go straight to their home now. Save you. It's monsoon season here at Crusaders. When I came here it was sunny and now it's not. I'm going to talk about Crusaders. So Crusaders were formed in 1898 and they were a junior club until 1921. And then after that there they became an intermediate league club up until 1949. They were one of the top non-senior teams in the country in Northern Ireland. Um, they won nine intermediate leagues and seven Stirling Sun Cups in their time in the intermediate league. So, I'm not going to touch much on Crusaders history when they were a junior team. Um, they didn't play here when they were a junior team. They played a couple of different places up in Grove. Now, I'm not going there today. Um, so we're just going to skip to the Intermediate League time. Here we go. So whilst competing at Intermediate League level, they reached the semi-final of the Irish Cup on three occasions in the 1920s. They beat the likes of Queen's Island, who were a big team. Again, I'm going to do a vlog on them someday. They beat Belfast Celtic and they beat Lauren in their cup runs. So Crusaders were really, really good at intermediate level and they kept applying to go up to senior level but they kept getting turned down. And it got to the point that Crusaders were considering applying to play in the Scottish Football League and the League of Ireland. But then World War II struck and football stopped. So Crusaders won the Intermediate League by a record points total in 1948-49 and similarly, similarly that season Belfast Celtic withdrew from the Irish League and Crusaders finally made it up to senior level football.
I've just been showing right round Crusaders, right round the main stand, in the back, round the boardroom. Um, Barney, the, the manager, the general manager, has been absolutely brilliant. All, I can't speak highly enough of him. Um, I can't. I can't speak highly enough of Crusaders today. This is this is something that I didn't expect. I, I just expected to turn up and you know try and sneak in, video around, and then talk. But I've got to see so much more, and I wish I sort of videoed it, you know, because Barney's very knowledgeable. Anyway, Crusaders became a senior football club in the 1949-1950 season. Their first game was against Porta Down in the City Cup, and as luck would have it. A player they signed from Belfast Celtic, who are now defunct, Vincent Morrison, scored the winner that day and they won 1-0. But things didn't, things didn't turn out the way they thought they would after that. Their Crusaders struggled and they finished 11th in their first season and they actually had to reapply to stay in the league, which they did. They reapplied to stay in the league. In 1953-54, Crusaders won their first senior trophy. They won the Ulster Cup, they defeated Linfield. 2-1. The 1960s brought success to Crusaders. They won the County Antrim Shield twice and they won the Ulster Cup. But in 1967, sorry about the wind. In 1967, they unexpectedly won the Irish Cup. They beat Glentoran in the final. And unbelievably, the season after that there, they got to the final again and they played the Blues and they beat them. So Crusaders two years in a row won the Irish Cup 1967 and 1968 and of course with winning a cup you get European football in 1967 Crusaders played Valencia in the Cup Winners Cup they were beat 8-2 in aggregate but they were there baby and then the following season when they got into the Cup Winners Cup they played Swedish opposition and they were defeated again the 70s the 70s were a special time for Crusaders Billy Johnson took over and he became the first cruise manager to win the Irish League or to win the cruise the Irish League. In 1972 and 73 they won it. Tommy Finney and Jackie Fullerton, we know Jackie, they played up top and they scored 47 goals between them that season. So this was a good Crusaders team, very good team and they strengthened the team and in 1975-76 they won the league again. And winning the league meant that they were in the European Cup. Now, any Crusaders fan of that era will tell you, over 11,000 people crammed into this ground. Liverpool came to Crusaders. It was the biggest show in town. They got beat. But Liverpool went on to win the European Cup for the first time in their history that season. And they played here. They started their journey on the shore road at Seaview. Unfortunately, in the 70s, the troubles were here. Belfast was probably where most of the troubles happened. Um, North Belfast was an incendiary area um, due to. Catholics, Protestants and, and that there. I, I don't want to go into that too much but unfortunately Crusaders were involved in two of the sort of the blackest moments in Irish League history. Not through any fault of their own by the way. Unfortunately they have the record of having the most police officers on duty for a football game in the UK. Now I don't know where that there still stands but it's the most in Northern Ireland anyway, the most in Ireland. Um, 1900 of them were drafted in for a derby game against Cliftonville and then worse to follow and for me this is before my time but this is probably the darkest day in Irish League history The killer of the reserve constable knew that these gates would be open some 15 to 20 minutes before the game ended and he took advantage of that it was a simple task then to run inside Kill the policeman from almost point blank range as the spectators dive to the ground in panic. January 1980, Crusaders were playing Ported Down. Well, first of all, we heard one single shot and then a short volley of like, semi automatic fire. Uh, chaos just developed. Uh, players threw themselves onto the ground. 
Uh, the referee was virtually the only person who stayed on his feet and obviously no one knew where the shots had come from or what was happening. Uh, about two minutes of a delay in the actual game as Elise Land Rovers left the far side of the ground where they were, uh, obviously trying to come out in pursuit of whoever had fired the shots. Uh, the referee made a, a very valiant attempt to try and get the game restarted, although at this time no one exactly knew still what had, what had transpired. Uh, game only lasted about 30 seconds after this and just fizzled out because obviously nobody had any interest left in, in what was going on on the field. An RUC constable was shot dead by the IRA. It's the only, the only death at a football game in Northern Ireland uh, during the Troubles. Um, it's a day that a lot of people don't know about, but it shows how far Northern Ireland has came from them dark days to now. The 80s at Crusaders weren't a good time. The team fell away in the 80s. Um, I think there was a lack of investment in that there, and they didn't really do anything at all. They won a gold cup, but that was all they won. But that led into the golden era, the real golden era of Crusaders. The 90s with Roy Walker. This here is fantastic. During COVID, people couldn't go inside or that there. And Crusaders actually created an outdoor museum. It's out the back of the club. And it's it's fascinating. It's got everything about them. I'm going to video around it and you can see it. And I'd, I would recommend anyone coming here, come and have a look at this. There's some fantastic things about it. Well, that's your... We're just saying about obviously Thomas Palmer. He was born in 19, 1865. But uh, feel free, you know, we've uh, a lot of our museum guys basically all put this together, sort of cracking all this up. There's a lot of other stuff too. So there's still a lot of mementos and bits and pieces in the. This is fantastic. So, Sligo, we're into the 90s, Roy Walker, let's talk about the 90s, let's talk about Roy Walker, let's talk about what happened, Harry Corey pumped money into the club, can he put it another way, he did, he pumped money into the club, along with a man called Tony O'Connell, Gypsy O'Connell is called down south, he is a Bohemian, Bohemian, Bohemians remember, I talked about that in another video, he is a Bohemian legend, and he is actually the honorary life president of both. So there you go, connections left, right, and centre. So basically, um, Crusaders were bringing loads of Dubliners up to play for them in the nineties. And Tony O'Connor, Tony O'Connor, Tony O'Connell was friendly with them, and he was in the textiles industry, and he supplied Harry Corey. So this is where their connection came, and he he put money into the club. He, he bankrolled Bohemian Football Club down south. Maybe another video. Ooh. So anyway, Crusaders won the Irish League in 95 and 97. They were also runners-up in 1993 and 96. They won the County Antrim Shield, the Ulster Cup and Gold Cup in the 90s as well. This team was known as the God Squad. As there were so many Christians in the team and the staff, yeah, I talked to Barney about this here, where Crusaders are always a Christian team, and he says there's no history of it. And he thinks that the reason why they got this sort of tag was because 
of the team in the 90s with the Christians. You said Roy Walker, there was Stephen Baxter, um, I think Kirk Hunter, there's a few other ones. And that's where the sort of the, the Christian thing came from. And because Stephen Baxter is still their manager, or is their manager now, and they, they continue to have players who are Christian, it sort of continued on and it stuck with them. So, after Roy Walker, there was a couple of other managers. And we go into the noughties. The noughties were a poor time for Crusaders. They were, they were probably the worst time in their senior history. Alan Dornan, a former Crusaders defender and favourite of the club, was manager. And he has got the unwanted record of being the only Crusaders manager ever to be fired. He had a really poor season in 2004-2005 and he was, he was sacked by the club. But Stephen Baxter took over. Stephen Baxter. Stephen Baxter, a legend in the shore road. A man mountain of a man. Dirty player, but a hell of a striker. He took over. He couldn't keep them up in his first season. He went down into the first division. But he came straight back up again. While they were down, they actually won the Stealing Sun Cup for the first time as a senior team since way back when they were an intermediate team. That's a good record to have. So anyway, let's talk about where Crusaders went when Baxter took over. I'm going to be brief about this here because I've talked about the history and I've talked about all things and looking at the history around me here is brilliant. Um, really, really good. But Crusaders have gone on to win the Irish League now in three three more occasions. Stephen Baxter at the helm. They've won the League Cup once in this time and they've won the Irish Cup on two more occasions. In 2012, they also won the Satanta Cup where they beat Derry City in the final. Their big rivals are Cliftonville. And while I film this here, the players are arriving around the ground because they're playing Cliftonville tonight in the Derby. Obviously, when you see this here video, it'll be after the Derby and the team will have won or draw or whatever. There you go. I should touch on this here. This is the last thing of Crusaders before I wrap this up. Now that pitch is Crusaders second 3G pitch. They already had one down. And it was significant because it was one of the first 3G pitches in senior football in Europe. And no other than Michel Platini backed the request to go to an artificial surface, 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 surface. Now that surface has been down for six years. Next year it's getting ripped up and they're going to get another brand new 3G state of the art um, 3G pitch, which will catapult them to the top of the sort of artificial pitch tree in Northern Ireland again. This is brilliant here. Wait, do you see this here? Ready? This is we unexpected bonus seeing the Irish Cup here. And it says on it, this trophy was presented to the Irish Football Association by John Lunn, the jewellers. There you go. I'm learning something new. And the, it says on the trophy, in memory of John Lunn, April 1993. So that's a new engraving that's on that there. It's an absolutely fantastic looking trophy. There you go, it was in Korean in 2018. That's the horse racing behind us. Look at that. So there you go. That's Crusaders Football Club. They are the Irish League Club that have the best history that I've came across so far. A history that I never expected. A history that I want to read more about. Fascinating. Honestly, I can't. And Barney, I, I can't speak highly enough of um, what the crews are doing at that ground is it's brilliant so it is uh, a lot of renovations up around the boardroom they're making a classroom to do uh, I think it's like a football course along with Belfast Met um, they have a lot of community relations sorry about the wind and anyway they're the current Irish Cup holders and I got to see the Irish Cup up close and personal there so that's Crusaders Football Club hope you like this video I really 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 enjoyed it it's probably my favourite one so far um, so yeah, if you know anything about the crews, leave a wee comment there, um, if you like, leave a wee comment, if you like it, like it, hit the wee like button, share, subscribe and all the usual stuff, 
Uh, these videos are getting better, I think. And I get more interested in everything that goes with them. Anyway, ciao.